Okay, so um, welcome to On Things to Come. Um, we, I'm glad we have many participants from uh, different parts of the world. I'm Takehiko Sato, uh, one of the, the uh, discipline, disciplinary scientists at Ishi Beijing. And uh, of course, uh, as Laura uh, introduced me, I was one, uh, one of past uh, speakers. And uh, I, I talked about JAXA's Akatsuki mission, but today uh, we have uh, another JAXA mission, uh, Destiny Plus, presented by Dr. Tomoko Arai. I uh, briefly introduce who she is. Dr. Tomoko Arai is a, a principal staff scientist of Planetary Exploration Research Center, uh, abbreviated PARC, at Chiba Institute of Technology, Japan. And she's currently serving as the PI of JAXA's Destiny Plus mission. Her research areas include um, many uh, topics, mineralogy, uh, petrology, geochemistry, and the reflectance spectroscopy of lunar and planetary materials. After uh, receiving her PhD from the University of Tokyo in 1998, she joined JAXA working for the development of the International Space Station, ISS, um, and their uh, science payloads and the data, uh, the Kaguya, or uh, formerly known uh, Serene uh, Luna mission. She moved to the uh, National Institute of Polar Research, NIPR, and as a postdoc uh, researcher in 2004. And then uh, she moved to the University Museum, uh, the University of Tokyo in 2009, uh, more than 10 years ago. Then she uh, joined the Park Chiba, uh, Chiba Te Institute of Technology in 2009 and has been uh, there since then. She led the ISS uh, MICHA project, uh, which conducted the MICHA observation on board the ISS from 2016 to 19. She participated in ANSMET, uh, the Antarctic Search for Meteorites, in the 2012 to 13 field season. So it's a cold place. Uh, and then uh, notably, uh, one of asteroids, uh, number uh, 22,106 uh, is named for her, Tomoko Arai. So today's topic uh, is not that asteroid, but uh, one of a uh, very interesting uh, solar system object uh, she's going to talk uh, to us. Okay, um, I'm, I don't talk too much, but uh, I hand my microphone over to Arai-san. Uh, so please start your talk, Arai-san. Hey, uh, thank you very much for uh, introduction, uh, Professor Sato. So um, let me share my screen. Okay, no, so, hi. So good evening, everyone. Uh, first, thank you so much for inviting me to present Destiny Plus mission in this seminar. And um, I am at uh, Planetary Exploration Research Center, uh, Chiba Institute of Technology in Japan. And I'm currently uh, as a PI of the Disney uh, Science Plus mission. So um, today I'm going to talk about overview and, and the science of Disney Plus. Okay. So, um, Japan has two classes of space science programs, and one is a small class science uh, program, which uses Ypsilon solid fuel rockets and plan to launch every three years. And another is a middle class space science program that uses larger H3 uh, rockets and plan to launch every five years. And this class is a small class, one of the small class uh, program uh, as shown here. And also uh, Destiny Plus is uh, part of the JAXA ISIS small body exploration strategy to understand how prebiotic seas of organic compo compounds and water uh, were delivered from outer source space. Uh, so also, okay, the Destiny Plus is a part of the JAXA ISIS small body exploration strategy to understand how prebiotic seeds uh, um, such as organic compounds and water were delivered from the outer solar system to the early Earth. 
and constitute uh, the fleet of ISA's small body mission explorer, which tackle these fundamental questions. Can you see this, the next slide? Yes. OK. So the Disney Plus is an acronym of demonstration and experiment of space technology for interplanetary voyage with faith on flyby and the science. And uh, this is a joint mission of technology demonstration and science observation. And engineering mission is led by ISS JAXA and science mission is led by Chiba Institute of Technology. And uh, dust analyzer on board Destiny Plus uh, is provided by international collaboration with DRL uh, and JAXA. So engineering goal is to expand the range of application for electric propulsion using ion thruster and, and also to acquire advanced flyby exploration technology such as uh, high-speed flyby or multi, a multiple flyby. And science goal is to characterize the cosmic dust en route to the Earth before atmospheric entry, and also to understand the geology of Phaeton, which is a parent body of the Gemini meteor shower and active asteroid. So uh, Disney Plus uh, was proposed uh, in 2015 and was selected in 2017 and launch is currently planned in 2024 and then arrival at Phaeton in January to 2028. So uh, Disney was uh, started as a concept of deep space carrier uh, which enables low cost frequent and flexible exploration utilizing a Epsilon solid fuel rocket. So here is a mission profile and scenarios. So a spacecraft is launched into a highly elliptical orbit by Epsilon S rocket with a kick stage. And it will gradually raise the orbit by electric propulsion using ion thruster up to the moon for about two years. After the lunar swing by, it takes another one year to get to our destination, Phaeton. And after flyby of Phaeton, if the spacecraft is still in a healthy condition, we will head to another target asteroid. And the current target candidate is asteroid 2005 UD, which is a likely breakup fragment from asteroid Phaeton. And uh, the Phaeton flyby point is at the geocentric distance of 0.33 AU, and heliocentric distance is 0.91 AU, and flyby speed is about 35 kilometer per second. So uh, this is a big picture of Disney Plus science. So the central theme of Disney Plus science is cosmic dust. The cosmic dust is considered to be a key provider of organic matter to the Earth and may have possibly served as prebiotic seeds of life on the early Earth. And to justify this hypothesis, understanding the nature and origin of cosmic dust brought to the Earth is critical. Disney Plus will study the physical and chemical characteristic of cosmic dust inside you and route to the Earth before the atmospheric entry and the apparent bodies. So uh, Disney Plus science target include a following three. The first one is interplanetary dust particles, which represent a mixture of miscellaneous dust originated from comets and asteroids, and interstellar dust particles entering the solar system. Number two is meteor shower dust trail, which is dust delivery route from the known source to the Earth. And then the last one is meteor shower parent bodies, which are known source of meteor shower dust particles. And the target of the Disney Plus mission is asteroid 32,000 Phaeton, which is a parent body of Gemini meteor shower and, 
and also active asteroid. So this table shows annual meteor showers and their parent bodies. And you can see that all the meteor shower parent body have a high relative speed with more than a few tens of kilometers per second. So the flyby is the only viable approach for, the, for these uh, kind of uh, small bodies. And we chose phase on formation target because it is a parent body of the Geminis, which is uh, one of the major medium showers and active asteroid with relatively low uh, speed. So this is the three key question to be addressed in Destiny Plus science mission. So the first one is contribution of cometary versus asteroidal dust in uh, IDPs. There have been a long standing question uh, from telescopic observation of zodiacal clouds and sample analysis of IDPs. And still, the, the contribution of the cometary and asteroidal uh, does uh, remain uh, unclear. And the second question is the chemical composition of interstellar dust particles in the solar system. And um, no organic materials. Uh, has been found in 36 uh, interstellar dust, which were detected by Cassini Cosmic Dust Analyzer. Uh, in contrast to the astronomical observation, which shows interstellar and also circumstellar dust is rich in organic materials. And then the third one is the dust ejection mechanism and geology of active asteroid. Um, the point source observation uh, with Earth Space Telescope cannot resolve the surface geology of the active asteroid and also a meteor shower parent body. So we don't know the dust ejection mechanism at this moment. So we definitely need a spatial resolved images of this body. OK, so uh, we have uh, two science goals to resolve the three uh, questions addressed in the previous pages. So goal one is to characterize dust and route to the Earth, which includes three objectives to determine mass, speed, and arrival direction, and a chemical composition of IDP and interstellar dust around 1 AU, and dust from Phaethon. And uh, another science goal is to understand the geology of Phaethon, which is Gemini parent body and active asteroid. And this goal includes two objectives, one is to constrain dust ejection mechanism from the active asteroid. And another uh, objective is to understand global surface material distribution of this body. So um, three science instruments are implemented, implemented to realize the science object, objective of the Destiny Plus. So a telescopic camera for Phaeton, a T-cap in short, and multi-band camera for Phaeton, a M-cap in short, uh, will conduct the surface imaging of Phaeton. And Destiny Dust Analyzer, a DDA in short, uh, is for in situ analysis of physical and chemical properties of the dust particles. And a DDA is developed by a University of Stuttgart, and two set of camera is developed uh, by us, uh, Chiba Institute of Technology. So this is the flyby imaging sequence for Phaeton. So five days, about five days prior to the flyby, the optical navigation uh, will start with TCAP uh, images. And by uh, 7.5 hours before the closest flyby of Phaeton, trajectory correction maneuver is complete. And then autom autonomous maneuver will start. And uh, closest distance for the flyby is 500 kilometers. So this is a flyby imaging sequence of two cameras. So we can start imaging spatially resolved phase on uh, 7.2 hours prior to the closest flyby at 500 kilometer distance. And within, within about one minute during the closest flyby, 
TCAP will capture about 50% surface with spatial resolution less than 5 meter per pixel with a range of solar phase angle from 0 to 90 degree. And MCAP will take images of phason with a solar phase angle of 10 degree. So here's a um, specification of the TCAP. This is just a conceptual design information. But TCAP uh, has a truck trucking mirror to and to truck uh, the phaeton during the flyby imaging to observe the phaeton as long as possible in the wide range of solar phase angles during the high speed flyby. And uh, these are uh, example of the surface feature uh, which are related to the dust ejection uh, observed on the surface of the comet churimov gerasimenko uh, captured by cameras on board Rosetta mission. So the, the Destiny uh, TCAP's high spatial resolution images will be used to identify surface structure related to the dust ejection uh, from Faison. This is a conceptual design of the MCAP. And uh, we use a multiple optical system, uh, so-called compound eye camera, to take images of multiple bands at the same time. Because uh, due to the high-speed flyby, we cannot use uh, uh, like a classical uh, filter wheel approach for the multi-band observation. That's why you adapt uh, multiple optical system. And we can get multi-band images of about 50% of the paid on surface with less than 100 meter per pixel resolution at the solar phase angle of 10 degree. And MCAP images will be used to understand the course of rotational resolved spectral variation as shown on the left, uh, together with the TCAP surface topography data. Okay, so uh, Destiny Dust Analyzer uh, is developed by University of Stuttgart and uh, Professor Raul Srama, SPI, and with the heritage of Cosmic Dust Analyzer on board Cassini. And DDA is an integrated impact ionization trajectory sensor and time of flight mass spectrometers, which enables to measure mass and speed and arrival direction and chemical composition for each dust particle. And two axis gimbal is equipped for pointing because they are seasonal preference of pointing for interstellar dust and also interplanetary dust particles. And our impact ionization uh, TOF mass spectrometer is a unique and powerful technique that we can directly measure dynamical information, including speed and arrival direction, and also chemical composition for each dust particle uh, simultaneously. And getting both dynamical and chemical information of each dust particle cannot be possible, either by sample return or ground-based analysis. But I note that the onboard impact ionization is a unique and challenging technique because we cannot actually calibrate on ground with an identical technique. So uh, ground calibration effort uh, currently underway jointly by German and Japanese team. So this is planned flowchart for identification of origin of each dust particle. Uh, for IDP, uh, the speed and arrival direction uh, will be used to differentiate cometary and asteroidal origin. And in addition, the chemical composition are also useful to differentiate uh, the dust uh, of cometary origin and asteroidal origin in comparison with the laboratory measurement data of mineralogy and chemical composition of IDP and Antarctic micrometeorites, which are collected on the Earth. And for interstellar dust, speed and arrival direction uh, entering the solar system are already known. So we discriminate uh, interstellar dust from uh, interplanetary dust particle with those conditions. 
For Faison, at this point, uh, ground and space telescope observations suggest possibly no or little dust ejection around 1 AU, where a dust system uh, spacecraft will conduct the flyby. Uh, and, but assuming a steady uh, dust production by micrometeoroid bombardment on the Phaeton surface, dust modeling suggests at least a few to several dust particles or greater number of the dust particles might be measured at the distance of 500 kilometers of the closest flyby of the scenic bus. We'll see. Okay, so uh, now let's uh, change a uh, shift the gear to the, the target asteroid Phaethon. So uh, as you may know, the asteroid Phaethon is a B-type asteroid, uh, B-type uh, primitive asteroid, and which has a blue, bluest spectral uh, property in the solar system. And perihelion distance is 0.14 AU. So uh, the surface is heated up to 1000 K at perihelion passage. And also it has a highly elliptic orbit and eccentricity is 0 .8, uh, 0 0.89. That's why the flyby is, speed is so, so large. And albedo is 0 0.08 to 0.16. So currently the albedo has a moderate uh, uncertainty. And this is a relatively high for carbonaceous asteroids. And diameter is about five kilometers to six kilometers. And orbital period is 1.4 years. And uh, note that it has a breakup body, uh, 2005 UD, which is a B type asteroid and one kilometer diameter, at least. Uh, there are several uh, candidates for the breakup from the Phaeton. And also, it has been suggested that Phaeton itself is possibly break up from the main belt asteroid 2 Pallas. But uh, so far, the meteorite analog for the Phaeton are not yet clearly defined. So some, some said thermally older, older CICM chondri, or some said CK4 chondri, or maybe uh, uralite. Okay, so... Um, Phaeton approached to the Earth as close as 10 million kilometers on 2070 December. So uh, international observation campaign are uh, conducted across the world. And we thank all the collaborators. So I would like to quickly go through the latest understanding of Phaeton. And also the international observation campaign for stellar occultation by Phaeton uh, is conducted in summer and autumn in 2019. And also I appreciate all the, the collaborators. Okay, so this is a receivable range Doppler images. And it, the images show several kilometers to several hundred meters size surface feature on, on surface, and such as two kilometer size depression near the equator and polar dark spot uh, of the less than one kilometer. And uh, no, rotationally resolved spectral variation uh, in visible range are reported by multiple observers shown here. And um, this variation is likely due to the different beam geometry and also solar phase angle. And you can see uh, in a single rotation, uh, blue spectra and flat red spectra are coexisting in, in, a, in, a, in a large ring uh, papers on the right. For uh, near infrared uh, region, no spectral variation has been reported, very uh, consistent. And also no three micron absorption band uh, has been reported. So suggesting absence of the hydrous minerals, at least on the surface of the Phaeton. And uh, planetary observation also conducted, were, uh, conducted by multiple observers. And the results show extremely large maximum polarization degree. And that large maximum polarization degree suggests a large surface grain size, at least a, a few hundred micron, and maybe a millimeter. OK, so uh, this is the, the latest version of the 3D shape model. Are generated by the show Marshall of Arecibo. Uh, 
And then uh, this shape model is generated based on the, the our receiver radar and also um, uh, multiple set of light curve and also occultation result. And the latest uh, size estimate is 6.4 by 6.2 and 5.2 kilometers and volume equivalent is 5.3 kilometer diameters. And uh, shown on the right, and pole orientation of the phaeton is almost mostly fixed on, uh, on, the, on the right. And uh, the stellar occultation by phaeton uh, was observed in multiple uh, observers in 2019, but uh, both indicate the event where the observations were made. And the, the first event in the US was a great opportunity with the bright stars and relatively long duration of event. And uh, this was actually a huge success. And so the observation of US event, uh, the result of the uh, US event is shown here. And uh, we greatly appreciate the Dr. Dave Dunham as the president of IOTA and the Dr. Mark Bouye of Surrey. So actually the, the receiver radar um, model is turned out to be shrinked 3% to give the space to the occultation result. So now uh, this is a result of the dust related -really observation of the phason. While the recurrent dust ejection at perihelion passage are reported, the dust ejection was not observed around 1 AU when a uh, phaeton approached to the Earth in 2017. And a dust trail of observed both thermal emission camera on the COVI and a visible camera on Parker Solar Probe. And um, also the sodium depletion and variation uh, of the Gemini dust are reported from the spectroscopic observation of total 150 Gemini dust in 2018 and 2019. And uh, sodium depletion may be caused uh, due to the sodium loss by solar radiative heating during the perihelion passage of the phaeton. Okay, uh, so this is uh, just a summary of what we know and what we don't know about Phaeton at this point, and I'm not going through the detail, but um, for the, the item highlighted by yellow will be studied by Disney plus observation, like a size and shape, albedo and spectral reflectance by T-cap and N-cap, and dust ejection uh, and mechanism and, uh, will be uh, studied by DDA and also camera and the surface composition will be studied by NCAP spectral observation. Okay, so here's a summary. So Disney Plus is a joint mission of technology demonstration and science observation to fly by Gemini meteor shower parent body. And it was currently planned launch in 2024 and fly by in January, 2028. And during the cruise phase, it's observed interplanetary dust particles and interstellar dust particle and dust trail with a dust analyzer. And during high-speed flyby of Phaeton, uh, this new plus conduct surface imaging with the uh, uh, with telescopic camera with tracking capability and multi-band camera and, and possibly analyze the dust near Phaeton. And uh, continuing ground-based study, uh, such as telescopic observation and dust meteorite analysis and thermal experiment and theoretical modeling and satellite and collaboration uh, with Hayabusa 2 and Osiris Rex are critical to support this new plus science. And sorry, and the, the, this is not a final. And then actually the advantage and unique feature of this new plus is that the spacecraft travel a spiral orbit and lunar orbit for single byte before reaching a deep space because of the small epsilon rocket. Actually, thanks to the small epsilon rocket. And we plan to make most of this opportunity to maximize the science outcome uh, utilizing uh, three science instruments. So uh, currently, we discuss optional observation plan during each phase as possible opportunities. So in addition to the science mission requirement, um, uh, we 
like to maximize the science result with any input. So uh, any idea or request are welcome. So if you have any interesting idea, just let me know. And then, sorry, but this is a final advertisement. Um, as a part of the activity to promote the integrated science of thus and their parent, thus and their parent bodies, uh, we, uh, Chiba Institute of Technology, annually have held international symposium since 2018, and it is called International Symposium on Dust Accreting on Earth and the Parent Bodies, uh, IDP in short. And every year, we pick specific theme related to the integrated science, as shown here. And, and we plan to hold the fifth IDP symposium on February 21st to 23 uh, next year. And we will send out the first circular in a month or so. So please mark your calendar and stay tuned. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. That's all. Thank you, Arai san. Very interesting, uh, exciting talk about uh, Destiny Plus, a very unique uh, mission with uh, lots of ideas. Actually, in chat box, we have we already have two questions. Uh, one, the first one is, if 3200 uh, 3, Phyton is from Paras, should there be more fragments like it? Oh, uh... Sorry, I'm not sure because because uh, <laughs> that derivation from the Paris is just a one model. So uh, mm. the one French team is suggested, but we're not sure yet. Um, and then I think at least at this point, uh, only the phason is a proposed fragment from Paris. So. Mm. Is there any way uh, that Destiny Plus contributes to answer that question? Because um, uh, the the link between the Paris and Phaeton has been suggested based on the similarity of the dynamical uh, mm. like similarity and also the spectral similarity, mm. but. Because um, Paris has a three micron absor absorption, which means uh -oh. which has a hydrous mm -hmm. mineral on the surface. But in mm -hmm. contrast, Phaeton does not have a three micron absorption band. Mm -hmm. So somebody said this is uh, evidence that they are not linked. But we mm -hmm. think because uh, the fragment from Paris uh, moved toward the, the sun and then heated. So maybe the hydrous mineral is uh, mm -hmm. dehydrated. That's why mm -hmm. we. Mm -hmm. Three micron was lost and mm -hmm. something like that. And unfortunately, this in plus uh, multi band camera has only mm -hmm. uh, four mm -hmm. bands. So mm -hmm. I don't think we don't have, yeah. we cannot get the, the data mm -hmm. uh, for the, how can I say, to okay. support. Yeah, I, I saw the uh, all, mm, all invisible wavelengths. Yes, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the second question in chat box is, would the surface of Phyton be like that of Ryugu or more like Itokawa? I, I think Arisa mentioned uh, large polarization of the surface observed from the surface or in reflected sunlight suggests a uh, large um, 100 micrometer uh, Large grain size. Grain. Yeah. And Yes, uh, I think uh, that's a good question because uh, recent paper uh, mm. about Ryugu uh, report that Ryugu also has a very large uh, maximum polarization degree mm. like Faison and also even the Bennu uh, mm. has a large polarization degree. So I think it mm. will be the common feature for the uh, primitive asteroid which experience a moderate mm. or extensive solar heating. Mm. Interesting. Okay, third question. After flyby of Phaeton, uh, where will the spacecraft go? I, I think it was uh, in the last uh, slides, uh, or one slide before the last. Uh, yes. I think yeah. Uh, one. Yeah, page 33. Yeah. Can you see my slide? Yeah, sequence number six. Yes, 
as sequence number six. So 2005 UD is a proposed breakup asteroid from the phason. So that is a, mm. the top candidate for the, the multiply, multiply, multiple flyby after the phason flyby. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Uh, if you, if audience uh, in the audience, uh, any um, participants, yes. if, you, if you have questions, uh, please chat, type in chat box or something. Yes, we still have uh, around five, 10 minutes. So in case um, there are more questions, please feel free to send them on Bidibili or here on Bookmarker. Uh, thank you very much once again, Professor and I, for the, for the excellent talk um, that everyone will be able to see um, on YouTube and Bilibili uh, tomorrow or the day after. Let's see. I don't know if, if Professor Sato or Professor Ip, who's also online, if you have any questions, feel free to tap in and, uh, and ask the questions. Um, if not, in the meanwhile, I would like to remind everyone that we're going to have another On Things to Come webinar next week. The topic is the HERA mission of the European uh, Space Agency, and a talk will be given by Michel Kupers, Michael Kupers, that is also part of the European Space Agency, and um, he's a project scientist of the of the HERA mission and also of Comet Interceptor. Interceptor, sorry. And the topic is um, asteroid impact as a natural disaster, and therefore um, the HERA mission is for planetary defense. Uh, but if you stick with us and join the, the, the webinar next week, you will be able to hear more from him. From him, Yes, exactly. And um, then I think uh, time's almost up. No further questions. I would like to thank you once again. Can I have one question? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Arison, you mentioned uh, the chance of uh, in situ observation of dust uh, at the 500 kilometers closest approach to Phaeton. But uh, uh, you mentioned the density is not large, but uh, I'm wondering if there is a risk of uh, hit, hit space, the hit spacecraft hit by a large amount of dust <laughs> to damage the instrument or a spacecraft bus system or so forth. Did you have, uh, did, did the project had has such a uh, discussion? Yes, uh, we did this assessment for the safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this moment, as I told you that the estimate of the dust number mm -hmm. at the distance of 500 kilometer is very low. Yes. And then in the, the, how can I say, the dust uh, causes the risk to the spacecraft is larger one. It's like a more than 250 micron or um, 500 micron. And there is zero uh, dust mm. of that kind of large uh, mm. at, at the 500 kilometer. Even 200 kilometer, there is no no large dust to cause okay. a risk to the spacecraft. So it should be, should be okay. Yeah. Let's cross our fingers. <laughs> 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 That's good for science because uh, it's possible there's no dust or maybe tons of dust. We mm -hmm. never know, so we'll see. Very exciting. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Professor Sato, if you have no further question, uh, then we can we can close it here. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, including the speakers, uh, Professor Sato, the moderator, and the participants for being uh, here today. And uh, see you next week. Hey, bye. Have a bye. good evening. You too. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye.